oath bringer. It brings the oath that the others will not. That's so bad. Hey, internet. I'm Steve, and this is Rafo. Welcome to part five and or seven of the Cosmere Connection series, where we dig into how everything is tied to everything else. Spoilers for all the things. Next up is Oathbringer, which is gonna be heavy with connections. If you weren't strapped in before, then, uh, strap in. The prologue, this time from Eshenai's perspective. She digs in a lot about listener forms and her first meetings with the humans over a year previous. She sees Gavilar meeting with Amaram and Teravangian, and he monologues about capturing Spren and even gods in gemstones. She takes a void light sphere, Clade says a voice led him to Zeth, and it's murderin' time. Back to today, Dalinar sees a Kolinar that got wrecked, and then sees Odium's champion, a figure in black black shard plate with red eyes and nine shadows. Oopsie, Sadius is dead. And Dalinar and Navani get married. Thanks, Storm Daddy. Dalinar starts to remember stuff. Cal makes it back home after the Everstorm. Syl remembers his parents and another voice, pure, with a song-like tapped crystal. Rashon gets a well-deserved punch to the face, and Kaladin meets his little brother and then flies off to go camping. Shalon and Dalinar make a holographic map. Renarin recognizes Dalinar's description of Odian's champion. And then, another murder! Bum bum bum! Don't worry, Adolin's on the case. Hmm. Renarin suspects something. He bees a truth watcher to Adolin and heals his wrist, which got broken in the fight with Zeth at the end of the last book. Dalinar did a bad thing at the Rift. But not as bad as the bad thing he did at the Rift, which he doesn't yet fully recall. Cal sees a yellow-white void spren and surrenders to the Parchman. Shallan invents Radiant, so she can spar with Adolin without feeling the history of her blade. Adolin was born under the Sign of Nine? Pattern offers to die so she can get a different spren. The Stormfather tells Dalinar about Honor Blades, Shard Plate, and confirms that Odium cannot break oaths. With Yezrian's blade, one could be a Windrunner unoathed, like a Herald, nearly. Guarding Dalinar today is Rial of Bridge 13, described at different times as a little pale for an Alethi and as a leathery, dark-skinned man. Might just be an oops, but Brandon has raffled whether or not he's a world hopper. Anyway, Dalinar chats with Zahel, then gets into a wrestling match and almost reaches for the thrill. He spars with Kadash, soldier turned ardent, while texting the Iriali Queen, and eventually sticks him to the ground using adhesion. Then, for the first time on screen, he hears his wife's name. Boom. Sill says the Parshmen have had their identity and connection restored by the Everstorm. Dalinar, in a flashback hunting for a knife in a high storm, sees a gargantuan figure that moved on spindly glowing legs. Huh? Shallan suppresses her stormlight leakage, which she apparently did as a kid. Does that mean she is able to stop it from leaking, or she just light weaves it invisible? Mraze is a guard for Ioli Sadius, with a pure green aviar on his shoulder, same color as Kokerly's, Dusk's aviar, who's green and red, and Miris, Vathi's aviar, green and white. They both do the same thing. They're streamers. So is Mraze's chicken another copper cloud with wings, or does it do something else? He knows what happened to Helleran. Why did the Skybreakers give him shards? The Void Spren camping with Cal and the Parshman looks Shin. Teravangian comes to Erythiru with Adrotagia and Malata, our first Dustbringer. He apparently had a strange illness five years ago, likely when he visited the Night Watcher. Chapter 25, The Girl Who Looked Up. This is the first time we hear the story, which may be based on an actual historical event. Is the wall metaphorical? A separation between planets? Is it literal? The misted mountains of Shinovar? Obviously she comes back with stormlight, but just stored in gemstones or accessible via bond? She's got white hair. Is there a connection to Hoyd somehow? Significance to the red scarf? I want answers, Brandon! Radiant chases some midnight Essence, a gloopy monster boy, who stabs Rock in the hand. The grown-ups all have a meeting, and Adolin tells Shallan that Amaram originally got his blade from Kaladin. Dalinar practices sticking things to the wall for the first time. Lynn tells him Bridge 4 found Oathbringer where Adolin dropped it, and it screams less loudly at Dalinar than other shard blades do. It apparently remembers his oath. 
Dalinar wonders if there's a way to save it. He and Teravangian muse on a trolley problem, morals, and hypocrisy. Sometimes a hypocrite is nothing more than a person who is in the process of changing. The Stormfather was specifically charged with choosing a bondsmith. Vale chases a gloopy monster boy back to its midnight mommy. It's real fun to see her personas shift paragraph by paragraph. Vale ran, Shallan skittered around a corner, Radiant dropped to her knees, but it's nothing compared to what we see at the end of the book. We see some artwork of three godlike beings, Honor, Cultivation, and Odium? Ooh, or the three bondsmiths spren, as well as the ten other types of radiant spren. Shallan and Renarin can feel the wrongness coming from Reshafir, but Dalinar hasn't. Something to do with the surge of illumination? Is there an unmade opposite to each surge? Or each radiant order? After all, Shallan compares her to a wacky creation spren, and later wonders if she was once human. Shallan gets intimate with an unmade. Risha Fear was originally imprisoned by a Lightweaver, which is interesting to me. Kaladin makes it to Revelar, a parchment conquered city, with his chicken scout troop. Camping trip over. For not the only time, he realizes that colonialism is problematic. Remember that one time when Cal was tied to the side of a building in a high storm and he saw Syl trying to deflect the winds around him? Well, he manages to actually pull that off. It's pretty cool. He makes it back to Erythru, and so does Yasna. End of part one. Oh heavens, this is already so long and there's still so much more to go through. Interlude one follows Puli, a Natan lighthouse keeper who's pretty jazzed about the whole Everstorm thing. His granddad told him to watch out for the time of changes, when men from the hidden island of the origin would come back to claim Natanatan, which is the kingdom that used to be where the Shattered Plains now is. They'll come with light in their pockets, sailors lost on an infinite sea. I'm sure that's not anything to worry about. Elista is a monk who likes romance novels, and is working to translate the Dawn Chant. I love the meta comment by the other Ardent. Sequels always have to be bigger. Pretty sure the patron for whom they're translating is Teravangian. Flashback to Venli finding Eshenai's body in the chasms. Tambor, yes, it's pronounced Tambor, finds a new person to bond. The epigraphs for part two are all letters to Hoyd from different shards. The first is from Endowment. I know it doesn't explicitly say so, but we figured it out through Wobs. And mentions the vessels of four other shards. Race holds Odium. Aeona and Sky held Devotion and Dominion on Cell before Odium splintered them. And Uli Da, a Shodel from Yolin, held Ambition before getting offed by Odium near Threnody. This letter also clearly hints that Hoyd was present at the Shattering, and refused to pick up a shard. The second letter is from an Avatar of Autonomy, addressed to Sephandrius, Bearer of the First Gem. This title is a reference to a topaz with mystical properties he once had, and is probably related to his former Donshardiness. It seems like Hoyd originally wrote a letter to Podgy, who couldn't reply because it's an island. No thumbs and the Avatar doing the responding seems kind of palsy with Rays. This is also where we have the one and only reference to Obrodai, an unknown shard world apparently claimed by Autonomy. Letter 3 is from Harmony, I think. This is a response to Hoyd's first contact with Harmony, so it seems pretty early after his ascension. And by now we know that Sazed definitely can still be surprised. Dalinar plays Starfall's VR online with Queen Fen, and she agrees to come over to his house. It's basically a replay of Way of Kings chapter 19, but from a different perspective. Sigzil tries to tell Kaladin a story like his master, and is less than successful. We get the actual story later in the book. Being a full world singer doesn't automatically grant skill in storytelling. And what would Hoyd do is a dangerous question. I think that might get Sigzil in some trouble later on. Rock is making lunch for Bridge Four Radiant Hopefuls and sees a gathering of Honor Spren, including Fendorana. Hobber regains his legs. Again. The original Bridge Four was found wedged in a chasm, and they use it for the last time to meet Rock's family. Apparently, He's a liar. We need his novella, Brandon! <laughs> Dalinar brings Navani and Yasna into a vision of Aharietium. Yes, that's how you pronounce it. Where we see humans fighting alongside the Voidbringers. Er, 
you know what I mean. This brings us back to the prelude of the Stormlight Archive at the beginning of The Way of Kings. In fact, the group comes upon the Ring of Honor Blades and recognizes Yezrians. The Stormfather breaks down the Oath Pact and Cycle of Desolations, the Fused, and refuses to tell Dalinar the secret of the Recreants. Dalinar realizes the blade Taln had wasn't his Honor Blade. Shallan gets a letter detailing the Sons of Honor and Skybreakers. Tien is the member of Amaram's army that had bonded a Spren. He was a budding Lightweaver. Teft is getting stalked by an Honor Spren and sold his uniform coat for Fire Moss. This chapter hurts. Dalinar gets Gox in the Last Desolation Vision and sees Yezrian give a victory speech. He looks familiar, probably seen him before. They pass a pile of burned Kremlings, Dustbringer versus Dissian Imian. Lyft shows up and references her travels in Edge Dancer. Somehow, due to her relationship with Cultivation, she can pop in and out of old Tight Butt's visions. We get our first POV chapter from Moash. He loses his plate and blade, manages to kill Leshwi the first time, and joins the Fused. There are gold and copper metalworks embedded in some Erythiru walls. Renarin surmises it's a fabriol that bees a city. Yasna remembers a childhood illness and betrayal, which is mentioned again in the next Dalinar flashback. Ivory talks about cryptics, honor spren, and says he's the only ink spren who's formed a bond so far. Apparently Wit told her the secret of the recreants? Moash chills with Kaladin's scout troop, back in a lumber yard, prepping to assault Kolinar. Shallan hitches up with Elokar for his mission. We get a long note from Naj about glyphs and the Cartographer's Guild. Super interesting if you want to write your own glyphs. Yasna notices that Concentration Spren, which are rare in Alethkar, are abundant in Erythiru. She gets news about Nail and the events of Lift's interlude in Words of Radiance, as well as a sighting of Axes the Collector. Then she eviscerates Amaram. So satisfying. Renarin finds the Gemstone Archive. He probably is able to open all the drawers at once through his Illumination Surge, waveforms and all that. Moash again, he sees a Fused grow a carapace saw on his arm using Void Light. That's just cool. Moash is apparently an ancient singer name. He meets Leshwi again and notices she has the same marbled pattern on her skin, though her features are different. Fused skin patterns must be tied to the spirit web. He's basically back in the bridge cruise, but now it's ladder cruise, and he's pretending to be Cal. Dalinar, Navani, Yasna, and Gox watch the recreants at Feverstone Keep, which we first see in Way of Kings chapter 52. The vision ends, except it doesn't. Dalinar meets Odium. Odium says Dalinar is the first to bond the Stormfather in his current state. Does that mean Honor died at the recreants? Lift pops in again. Interludes! We see a soulcaster heading to Imea on a ship called the First Dreams. It's bad enough when you find a bug in your food, but when a sentient collection of bugs is making your food, it can be deadly. There's a lot in that chapter, but uh, we'll get to it later, for reasons. Teravangian's feeling super smart today. Malata was a member of the Diagram before becoming Radiant. The story of Uskri, who drowns herself in the sea after hearing her lover has died, is pretty Shakespearean to me. Venli gets spared from becoming a fused by Odium, envoy form instead, and continues to hide Tambor. Part 3! The epigraphs for this part are excerpts from the gemstone archive that Renarin just found. The type of gemstone is representative of the Night Radiant Order it's for. Let's see, uh, white shin dude. So sapphires are from Windrunners, smokestone from Skybreakers, rubies from Dustbringers, interestingly, no diamonds, which would have been from Edge Dancers. They were apparently busy. Emeralds from Truth Watchers, Garnets from Lightweavers, Zircon from Else Collars, Amethysts from Will Shapers, Topaz from Stone Wards, and a lack of Heliodor from the one Bondsmith of the time. Knowing what order said what thing grants some insight. We even get a kind of a hint on the Windrunner fourth ideal. Am I not supposed to want to help people? Kaladin finds out he's got land now. Right here. Queen Fen takes them on a tour of the city, and we see some statues with their faces broken off in the Temple of Shalash. The Everstorm has a lot of variety. Different levels of wind, rain, lightning, sometimes even burning embers. I wonder if that has to do with the different types of spren. The Temple of Talenalot got particularly wrecked, as if Odium has a grudge or something, I don't know why. Dalinar does this. 
but then turns to construction. The Elhokar company is flying to Kolinar, wearing the scuba masks Shalon wore checking out the Santhid. Lashings work basically the same as storing in an iron mind, fractional weight. Shalon and Kaladin both sense the presence of the unmade in the city. She's two for two. Kolinar was probably made the same way Erythiru was built. The strata is similar. Then we get a whole lot of interbook things happening, and I'm trying to avoid turning this into a summary video. So jumping to the good parts, Dalinar using connection to understand Azish is described as a push. Related to Allomancy? Yasna writes the perfect essay. Lyft says she's gonna Peter Pan. I won't grow up. The Kolinar gang hear about Interlude 12 in Words of Radiance, a student getting called out by that one ardent. Lon is eventually Shallan's guide at the hearty party. Shallan meets Wit for the third time, telling the moon story Sigzel tried to tell Kaladin. He might be light weaving, but it would have to be Yolish at this point. He does have a jar of Taldane sand, though, which detects kinetic investiture. It's how he noticed Shallan. Also, he might be soothing the crowd. He misses his flute. Kaladin. They have fabrial ceiling fans, which probably means they could create fabrial motors. The last seven times Hoyd's gotten mixed up in religion were disastrous, and one god still worships him. Uh... He tells Shallan when he was young, he made a vow to always be there when he was needed. According to the Knight's Radiant Challenge coins, that's basically the second ideal of the Stone Wards, over whom Taln is the patron herald, and also Topaz is their pole stone. Significance? He finally finds out that Sadius was murdered. The Cult of Moments reminds him of a group he knew long ago, equally dangerous, equally foolish. Probably had 16 people in it or something. These type of things get longer when Hoyd shows up. Getting ready to socialize in Kolinar, Adolin says he, Scar, and Drehi go way back. They're the ones that pulled him out of the chasm during his duel with Eshenai at the end of Words of Radiance. Here's Azure! High Marshal Azure, aka Vivenna from Warbreaker, has been through some stuff. Duff, since we last saw her. She's got an awakened sword of some kind, sporting a few new scars, and is no longer the apprehensive uptight princess she was in the last book. She's a leader who's seen warfare. Goodness, I want the Warbreaker sequel so bad. She's got some grammatical weirdnesses that help mark her as a world hopper, damnation me, etc. I find it really interesting that the social stratification we see in Stormlight, particularly with tenors and middlers, low-ranking light eyes, is remarkably similar to nobility and ska in Mistborn. Shallan almost creates a new personality in Swiftspren. Elokar notices pattern on Shallan's skirt and says it looks familiar. He was seeing cryptics back in Way of Kings, which spurred his paranoia. Dalinar does a big oopsie, which is the reason why Kadash, once one of his elites, turned to the Ardentia. He hears the screams of the people in the rift in a similar manner to what we see with Zeth. Interesting to note that Dalinar, even before learning about Evie, recognized that they had gone too far. Sadius disagreed. The Kolinar gang strategize in a storm cellar during the Everstorm. Kaladin flicks away a strange Kremling, definitely from one of the sleepless. Shallan heads to the hearty party. She meets a woman wearing a blank white Southern Skadrian-esque mask and hears a particularly startling hum that gets zero explanation. Kaladin hangs out with Azure, who wears her gloves during dinner. He says she looks very Alethi, the right skin tone and hair with eyes of light orange. Is Azure able to light weave? Or are the royal locks even more powerful than we knew? Or do the people of Nalthus also just look Alethi? Maybe Breath is able to, I don't know. She refers to her sword as female, Maybe Nightblood will get a girlfriend and calm down! Shallan makes it to the actual heart of the Revel, which beats a pattern of four rather than two. And then has a chat with Sia Anat, who she sees in her shadow, pointing the wrong way. There's an attack on the wall, and Azure lets slip a color-based idiom, like white on black. Cal kills a fused with a sill knife, and its eyes don't smoke, it just dies. Azure brings him to a secret room inside of one of the wind blades. An ardent with a soul caster is busy and seems to have vines growing under her skin and out the corners of her eyes. Slight tress spoiler, so if you haven't read it, close your eyes for five seconds. But, I mean... Hoyd had given Azure sheets of aluminum, which hide the soul caster, but also block span reads. Shallan's broken. I love this fan art of it, though. Hoyd finds her. How? 
He rioted some men into forming a militia and ousting the local gang. He and Shalon team Lightweave a rendition of The Girl Who Looked Up. This chapter is important. Like, emotionally. The gang get ready to assault the palace. Adolin had Shalon make him a glyph ward, Determination, which is actually Dalinar's chosen Vorin ideal, back when he was Vorin. He talks with his sword, acknowledging that it used to be alive. The outside army attacks, and they brought a thunderclass. First one we've seen in real life. They have a cave troll. The good guys head to the palace, where we see Azure use her shard blade. It cuts through stone easily enough, but rather than burning out eyes, it turns its victims gray. She fights with her cloak wrapped around her left arm. The title of this chapter, Crimson to Break, comes from her. Adolin rescues a group of palace guards who refuse to obey the queen. They'd been locked up for weeks, but claim it felt no more than a few days. Cal heads with Elokar to the royal chambers, and Adolin gives him a bridge four salute. <laughs> they head down a hallway with statues of the heralds, nine out of ten, at least. The same hallway Zeth passes through on the night of Gavilar's assassination. They find the queen, along with mounds of food that, despite being covered with decay spren, isn't rotten. Does it think it is? Pain and panic are tormenting baby Gavinor, and Kaladin manages to kill one with his sill blade, which is weird. A Sudan claims to be continuing Gavilar's work, bonding ancient spren and creating radiance. Definitely ate something she shouldn't have. Serious indigestion. Shallan is confronting Ashert Marn, and hears Hoyd inside her head. He may have been the one to push the unmade back, as Shallan was surprised it happened. Or it's all a setup. It's a setup. The tiled floor of the control building has representations of lions, whales, and other non-native creatures. Tia Anat appears. She says she's not of Odium anymore, and tells Shallan to ask her son for confirmation. Who's the son? Renarin. Kaladin sees friends killing friends. Guys, war is hell. Elokar starts to say the first ideal. Moash finally gets his revenge. Sia'anat promises to try not to kill them, and the remainder of the Kolinar group, minus Scar and Drehi, plus Azure, plop into Shadesmar. For the first time in person, we meet Pattern, Syl, and most uniquely, Maya. End of part three. And that will probably do us for this video. Part two of Oathbringer will be coming next week, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the thing and then the other thing so you know as soon as it comes out. Or better yet, support me on Patreon and you can watch it right now. Link in the description. Speaking of, thank you so much to Doug and Matt, as well as the rest of my patrons for your support. And of course, read and find out.